Chiang Mai's second-hand bookshops are unique. Nowhere else in the world can such a diverse array of publications be found. And the most popular of them all is the Backstreet Bookshop in Chiang Mai Khao Road, just off Tapei Road. Very diverse, and um, it books span the, the world, and uh, there's very um, obscure stuff and bizarre stuff. I mean, they have a whole section for the paranormal, and um, it's just very interesting. So interesting and diverse, in fact, that a lucrative little cottage industry has sprung up in Chiang Mai over the years. Take a walk on the wild side, up this flight of stairs at the Backstreet Bookshop, and discover that there is a lot more to Backstreet Books than meets the eye. The owner, George O'Brien, has had a checkered career, starting as a chef at a hotel in Dublin during the 1960s. He then travelled around Europe for about five or six years, eventually returning to Dublin to set up his own restaurant. But his career took an unexpected turn when the building that housed his restaurant was demolished. This gave him the opportunity to quit the business and backpack his way through Kathmandu. After years of travel, he finally ended up in Pai in northern Thailand, opening a small bookshop there. It flourished, so he shipped his considerable collection of books over from Ireland, set up the Backstreet Bookshop, and the rest, as they say, is history. When I opened the shop first, uh, I had a house full of books at home, about 4,000 books, and about 1,000 were on birds, you know. And I, when I opened the shop, I thought, Nobody is ever going to buy these, you know. There were a lot of academic stuff. And I had them in the shop about six months and it didn't sell any, you know. And lo and behold, this Thai guy came in one day, he was a doctor, and he bought two. And he was from Bangkok, and within six months I had only put four left, you know. So it was a great interest, and it, it taught me a lesson that if a book is good, it'll sell. But some of these I didn't want to sell, but I ended up selling them anyway, you know. But I had a great interest in I was a bird watcher for years myself, you know. I'd done a course in UCD in, in Dublin, you know. You know it, it's, um, it has stood to me over the years, you know. If I ever retire, uh, I'd probably take up bird watching. But uh, I found something in the bookshop that an old man told me many years ago. He said, if you found, find something that you love to do, you never have to retire. <laughs> Oh, camera, camera, professional. <laughs> and retirement is certainly the last thing on George's mind. Buyers are coming from all over the world, and business is doing very well. And he's still amazed at how some titles and authors, which one wouldn't expect to be big sellers in Thailand, have actually proved to be quite popular. Samuel Beckett, what a man. All the best English, all the best English writers are Irish. Everybody knows that. But one would think this wouldn't be so popular in the, the hills of Thailand, but we sell quite a few of Samuel Beckett. There's uh, about three or four universities and a lot of schools here, and it's uh, not unusual to sell maybe one a week of these yeah, sometimes. Apocalypse now. Uh, no bookshop in Southeast Asia should be without these, one of these. Uh, uh, taken from Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. It's one of the, you can always sell this book. It's uh, riveting. Yeah, um, the bookshops here are really good. Um, there's lots of variety. Um, they're pretty cheap as well. And they're all really good quality. So, um, yeah, it's really good. Pleased with the demand for books of all ages, George decided to diversify. We broke into the vinyl a couple of years ago. Um, um, I'd just done it out of pure pleasure. I didn't think it was going to be a, kind of an economic success. <laughs> but it turned out okay, actually. Yeah. But um, we have a kind of a, a mixed bag here. Yeah. First of all, we brought some back from England and then if you have something you'll get more of it. <laughs> People came in selling them so I, I bought them and I bought a couple of thousand of this guy yeah. and 
actually, they weren't bad. I, I, I started looking into it and they were, they were quite, you know, lucrative if you can find the people to buy them, you know. But we just left them anyway for a while and slowly but surely, without any advertising whatsoever, people bought them. And there seems to be a, a resurgence in, in, in vinyl. It's like we broke the record kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> it works, and the most unusual ones are pretty hard to find now. Yeah? Russian choral music of the 18th century, not my best seller. <laughs> but it's enjoyable, and uh, we have a turntable. In the Lost Bookshop, we have most of the vinyl records, and before they buy them, they can test them on the turntable. I'm impressed with the English selection in Chiang Mai. I was looking for a book and you know you go to the airports and the train stations and you see the little shops with the you know traditional array of selection but then you come here and they have a very large uh, variety of books. George has now gone into partnership with the owner of The Lost Bookshop in Rachamankala Road where he now spends half his day aided and abetted by his trusty assistant, Joy. Yeah, there's a lot of books coming in from England in a couple of weeks. We stuck to our criteria in the beginning was just to have a good bookshop and to make enough money to survive and pay the staff. And in the end of the day, the staff are the ones who, who, who they, they make it what it is. You know? and it's all thanks to them, really, not just to me. Staff you have around you to make it. As digital technology continues to change the way we live, many book lovers fear for the fate of the printed word. Already several major bookstores around the world have shut up shop, and a lot of small independent booksellers are struggling to survive. With the proliferation of e-books so easily accessed and downloaded from the internet, what lies ahead for Chiang Mai's iconic second-hand bookshops? Who knows, eventually it will it'll, uh, it'll probably do damage. Yeah. Our generation, and maybe the one before us, will be okay because they're used to the actual physical book. But the younger generation, I mean, they're, they're brought up, they go to school with laptops, yeah, so the, the whole thing has changed. Yeah. It's a different ball game for them. So we can put our heads on their shoulders and vice versa, so I think it'll probably I'm sure not in my lifetime. Yeah, I think I could get in my, you know, another ten years out of it. <laughs> Wishful thinking, I suppose. But I think that's, that's probably where it's at. I don't know. It can go anywhere, but um, at the moment it's okay. I'm still buying books and I'm still selling books. That's about the size. If he's right, we can thankfully look forward to at least another decade of browsing the bookshelves. But as the Lord Buddha preached, nothing lasts forever. It would be tragic to see the end of the second-hand bookshop era, so make the most of it while you can. Check out www.backstreetbooksiam.com and discover that there is more to Backstreet Books than meets the then 